Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. My name is Lee Hollins. I'm a retired battalion chief from Cedar Hammock Fire Rescue in Bradenton, Florida. Here we are at a MC-406 tanker trailer. I just want to point out some basic anatomy features of this tanker trailer. First thing I want to point out is if you look at the back or the front of this tanker trailer, it's elliptical in shape, which is an identifying feature unlike any other tanker trailer. So that will give you an idea from front or back that this is a 406 tanker trailer, typically carrying gasoline or diesel product, but you'll have to look at the placard and determine those things. You also look down at the top of this tanker trailer uh, along that rail at the top. You'll see some numbers up there, and that is not on all tanker trailers, but on this particular one, that's showing you the maximum capacity of each compartment. This is a four compartment tanker trailer. That rail that you see up there is also part of what's known as the vapor recovery system. And what that is, is that when a tanker trailer is offloading fuel into an underground tank, the vapors of that tank are pushed back out and it's going to go through a hose that's connected to that tank and it's going to go back into this tanker trailer via that hose and this vapor recovery system, which uh, part of that is this connection you see at the corner here and you see that pipe going up the back of the tanker trailer. So that connects to that rail, and that is all part of collecting those vapors so that they're not out into the atmosphere. With that said, we're gonna go ahead and take a look here at some other components. Uh, you can see, of course, the placard 1203, that's gasoline. We're gonna talk about some of that in another session of training minutes. And as we look down the side of this tanker, the other thing you'll see here is up top where this vapor pipe enters that rail, you see those two discs up there. What they are is that's a negative pressure and a positive pressure relief valve. One is one, one is the other. What that means is this is a low pressure tanker trailer. So it's, it's designed for two PSI or less. And if the pressure inside that tank increases above two PSI, that relief valve will just let out some of that vapor uh, to keep that pressure low. On the other side, if this tanker trailer, let's say the, uh, the gasoline that is loaded into this tanker trailer is a warm product, and this is in a northern climate, go out into the cold, and that pressure starts to diminish and gets less, it will allow air into the tank so that that tank won't collapse because this tank is made of aluminum, single wall aluminum. So that's what those two things are. Now you may not see those on every tanker trailer and I want you to know that there's exceptions to most rules here with these features and so forth. But if it's not uh, visible as you see here, there's going to be another system within that rail or the dome covers at the top that will allow for this pressure to regulate itself. So that's what that's all about. As we come down the side of the tanker here, you can see that the various hoses are carried on the side here up top. And as a general rule, the larger hose when they're de delivering product is gonna be liquid and the smaller hose is gonna be vapor. So that's, that's the way that works. The, the black hose you see is a high pressure hose and that is used when they actually have to pump, they being the operator, has to pump gasoline from this tanker to an above ground tank. So that's a rated pressure line right there. So there's two, uh, three types of lines. There's your liquid line, your vapor line, and then a pressure line. That's typical for one of these gasoline tankers. This, this compartment here that you see, the large compartment, that's typically for fittings and cones and safety uh, items with this tanker trailer. And then as we move along here, these are known as the external valves. So of course, this is what the hoses connect to. And this is part of the vapor system. And this is part of the vapor system here. These all connect together and go up that pipe in the back as, as we mentioned. So uh, these are just for convenience. There's three different places that they could put their vapor line that uh, captures vapors from the tank. So that's, that's all connected together. As we move down here, 
This is your, your valve box right here, and there's two type of trailers. There's an air trailer, and there's also a manual trailer, meaning that the valves are either air, pneumatic operated, or they're manually operated. So when I lift this open, you can see there's a plunger right here. What that does, as soon as that compartment is lifted open, that plunger uh, is activated and it makes sure that the air brakes are locked on this system and also it opens all of the vapor valves at the top. And then looking in here, there are manual valves in here, one for each compartment. And those valves are actually uh, connected by a braided cable to each of the valves underneath which are known as belly valves. Each compartment will have a belly valve which is activated by these controls in this box. And so when I pull one of those valves in this box, it opens that particular belly valve. The product will then flow into these lines down here. And then the final product is going to go into a hose, into a below ground tank in most cases, by this final external valve right here. So that's the way this system works as far as this side of the tank or trailer. As we move around towards the front here, there's not much in this area. However, uh, as I mentioned, the placard is going to be talking about you know what product is or was on this tank or trailer. Moving around here, again, not a whole lot for us to be concerned with. However, here is a critical component of this tanker. This is the emergency shutoff right here. So there may be various types of shutoff valves, switches, whatever, but it will always be at this left front corner of the tanker trailer. That's going to be critical because that will shut off all of those belly valves and stop the flow of product. As we move down and look at the landing gear, this is going to be important also. This landing gear is not designed to support a fully loaded tanker trailer. So that's important in the case of an operator of the tractor portion that may want to pull away because of a leak or a fire situation. Bad move. It's, it's not designed to support a fully loaded tanker trailer. So that's just the basic anatomy of this tanker trailer. In future sessions of training minutes, we're going to look in detail at some other components of the tanker. With that said, this is Lee Hollins. Thank you for watching Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.